I have flashed a couple of motherboard BIOSes on this channel. And each time there is one little detail that makes me cringe. Flash or not to flash the boot block? Why is it mentioned in every flashing utility? What does it do? And does every motherboard have one? In today's video we are going to shed some light into the mystery that is the boot block. We are also going to hot flash a BIOS chip, which means we will swap and then flash a BIOS chip while the motherboard is powered on. The poor motherboard I will be misusing for this project is the ASUS P3BF, a slot 1 motherboard for the Intel Pentium 2. The model number of the BIOS chip on this motherboard is V29C51002T. Luckily we can find a really good datasheet for this chip online. Apart from the general information like operating voltage, size and access time, we learn that there are two versions of this chip available. And the distinguishing factor is where the boot block is written. What a coincidence that I just happened to make a video about this topic. The diagram on the bottom right shows the organization of the internal storage, including the location of the boot block. Our chip is the left model, ending with a T in the part number. The boot block is located at the top or the high memory addresses. This will be important later when I will try to brick the BIOS. Now I don't want to brick the BIOS and end up with a useless motherboard. I like this board very much. So I got some identical flash memory chips. Now we had all this talk about BIOS chips and boot block locations. But what is it? The boot block is supposed to be a protected area on the BIOS chip that could potentially help recover from a bad BIOS flash or corrupted BIOS data. I immediately thought about the BIOS flashback feature of my X570 board. This feature allows me to flash the board without a CPU installed, recover from a bad flash attempt or just update the BIOS to the latest version. And all this by just pressing a button at the back of the I.O. panel. I actually used it after I sold my Ryzen 3000 CPU and had to flash a BIOS with Ryzen 5000 support. Sure, the boot block feature on the ASUS P3BF, which is over 20 years old by the way, isn't that sophisticated. But it is essentially just that, a feature for you to recover your motherboard BIOS. We don't have an activation button and we will be severely limited as you will see, but I'm surprised that such a feature was already present back in the day. Before we go ahead and brick the chip, we have to do some preparations. First, we need to create a bootable floppy disk. Yes, floppy disk. Remember the limitations? The boot block supports reading data from a floppy disk only, or a floppy emulator. Oh, and if you want to see something on the screen, you also need an ISA video card. PCI or AGP cards are not supported by the boot block. We are down to the bare minimum. Once we are done creating the bootable floppy disk, we also need to copy the flashing utility for the motherboard. Last but not least, we also need the BIOS binary file. It is not a bad idea to test the boot disk before we go ahead. Now I will create a second identical floppy disk, but I will add an autoexec file to automatically start the flashing process. This will be helpful if you do not have an ISA video card and you need to flash the BIOS blind or automatic. For most flashing utilities, the autoexec content will be similar. Call the utility, add some options and specify the BIOS file. Save the content to the bootable floppy disk as autoexec with a BAT extension. And now it is time to move on to the BIOS chips. To create a functioning BIOS clone for the ASUS P3BF, we need to boot from the original chip and boot to DOS. Then we swap the chip with a new one and flash the BIOS on it, all while the motherboard is powered on. Before I power on the board, I loosen the chip a little bit. As I said before, this board is over 20 years old. This chip is in the socket probably for the same amount of time. After the chip is removed, I reseat it just enough so all pins make good contact in the socket. Now it will be much easier to swap the chips. I already have the new BIOS chip here. Make sure you align it properly. If you insert this chip in reverse, you will damage the chip and maybe the motherboard too. So be very careful if you're doing this. Let's use the floppy disk that does not have the autoexec file and boot into DOS. We do not want to automatically flash the BIOS just yet. Now this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Swap the BIOS chips. Now.
Now we can go ahead and flash the chip as usual. Oh, and don't forget to flash the boot block as well, like I almost did here. The chips I got are used. They may be empty or they may have some data on it. In any case, we need to erase them and write the full BIOS including the boot block to the chip. So, flashing was successful. Let's try to boot the board with the new BIOS chip to make sure everything works. Great, the board boots exactly like it did with the original chip. Now it's time to break it. To do so, I will just flash the BIOS again, this time without the boot block and turn off the power mid-flash. Whoops, there it goes. Ah, guess what? The board doesn't boot. Even when I add an ISA video card, there is no VGA output. Nothing, the board is just dead. At least the board works again with the original BIOS chip, that's a relief. Okay, no problem, swap the BIOS chips again and hot flash the BIOS once more and then try again. This time, I will cut the power while the chip is being erased. And again, no success. The board is dead. I tried during erasing, programming at the beginning and programming towards the end. But before the boot block starts, remember what I said at the beginning about the location of the boot block being important? You see, the boot block starts at address 3C000. My attempt to brick the BIOS is at address 2DC7 or something. So we should be fine. But nothing. The board either doesn't want to boot at all, or if it boots, it is some kind of half a BIOS. If the board boots, there are no logos. One time, the IDE detection was missing, so I guess the code block didn't make it to the chip. And another time, the IDE detection happened, but we get some error message on the configuration summary screen. Something about BIOS update data incorrect and some CPU ID. But somehow the board seems to work. It at least booted from the floppy drive. So after all of this, I gave up. I cannot force the board to execute the boot block this way. I really do not know why that is. I have a suspicion that the flashing tool always flashes the boot block regardless what option was used to start the tool. And since the boot block is the last bit of data written to the chip, it was always missing when I cut the power mid-flash. If on the other hand the main BIOS is partially there, the board just executes whatever it finds. Also, when I look at both types of flashing procedures, they do look identical. I couldn't spot a difference between flashing the BIOS with or without the boot block. But I promised you that we will see some boot block today. And I will keep my promise. We just have to short a few pins. Okay, first of all, I do this for two reasons. First, I'm curious. And second, so you don't have to. Shorting two pins on a running PC can literally blow up something. So I want to make absolutely sure that I have the right orientation of the chip for this hack. First I look for the power rail, the 5 volts, and then I look for ground, which should be exactly in the opposite corner. Then I pick the two address lines that I want to short. I read this information online. This genius is not coming from me. The source mentioned to pick high address lines. In my case, I will take these two, A15 and A16. It is important to short these two lines before powering on the motherboard. Once you trick the board into believing that the BIOS is corrupt, you remove the short. I have a feeling I'm going to regret this. Here we go. Got my conductive tweezers and now let's go. Oh my, the boot block is finally here. Well, the program that's stored in the boot block. And it boots from the disk. Great, we have an absolute minimal BIOS boot. Believe me, this is what I'm trying to show you since about 10 minutes. Well, 10 minutes for you. It took me hours to get there. The video output comes from an ISA video card. To finish this video, let's try a fully automated BIOS repair by using the floppy disk with the autoexec file. So let me short the two pins again and fool the BIOS into boot block mode. And here we go. With this method, you could restore your BIOS if the boot block works. 
I am a bit sad that I couldn't brick the BIOS and see the boot block restore after the simulated power loss during a flash. But I am happy that we saw this barebone boot program that many have never seen. But it may have made the day for others. If you have some experience with boot blocks, or if I did something wrong, let me know in the comments. So there is nothing else to say but like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.